Hey everyone, what's going on? Joey here, and as you know, we're everything mask singer and mask dancer. And one thing we always had questions about, people ask us, and we always kind of like trying to figure out how this happens is, where do these amazing costumes come from? Who designs them? How are they put together? Where do they get their ideas? And so today we're gonna answer all of that for you right now. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you give this video a thumbs up. Let's get started. So since season one of episode one of The Masked Singer, there's been one mastermind behind the inspiration and creativity behind these costumes. It is Marina Toybina, and she is from Moscow, Russia. She was born and raised there, and she has worked with so many massive celebrities from pink to, and get ready for this, and you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this makes sense. Do you remember Katy Perry's halftime performance at the Super Bowl? Do you remember those sharks dancing behind her that became a sensation overnight? Yeah, Marina made those. Pretty cool, right? So she is world renowned. She's also won five Emmy Awards. I mean, this lady really knows what she's doing. Well, she's the one behind our costumes and she actually designed some costumes for different versions of The Masked Singer. She just sat down with the website below the line to talk about all of those questions we had in the beginning of this video. So let's go ahead and break down what she said. Probably the number one question we always get is, where does she get inspiration from? And in this article, she pretty much breaks down how the costumes even come together. First and foremost, she likes to look at different kind of demographics and different kind of, I guess you can kind of just say style of clothing. She likes to look at everything from old period pieces, from fantasy to sci-fi. She likes to see what's going on, what's crazy in pop culture. She goes on to say that she is a fan of the other different versions of The Masked Singers and other shows that kind of have costumes on it. And she looks at those versions and she sees what she likes, what she doesn't like. And then she takes that information and goes, what can we do differently on this version of the show? And when she kind of has like a good idea of that, she'll start pitching little things here and there to the network. The network and them will go back and forth. Maybe they have a costume they have in mind. Maybe her and her team has something that they kind of like and want to roll with. Once they finally have the costumes all set, it's now time to sketch them up and wait until the actual cast, AKA the contestants, are cast on the show. This is the next question you guys had is, do any of the celebrities have input on their costumes? The quick answer is, yeah, they actually have a lot of input on there. And she goes on to say that once the costumes are brought forward to the talent that's being cast, we work together with them on their first welcome call to take in some ideas. And then from there, that's where we kind of bring everything to life. Once they get the chance to speak to the talent, they show them like many different options, maybe a few different sketches. Like for example, Bobby Brown, that crab costume was actually already designed. And so was the Russian Dolls one too for Hanson. We'll get back to Hanson in a minute. She'll then from there have an open conversation with them. Do they like the artwork that's pitching? Do they have anything in particular that they kind of want to put on there, something significant? And then from there, they do a couple sketches. When they finally have a good idea what they like and maybe they want to tweak something, they'll, you know, pitch it to them. They'll resketch it and two or three days later, they come back and they show it to them. And then from there, they start making the costume. And the interesting thing is, you're probably like, well, once they probably start doing that, you know, you can't change anything. No, no, according to this interview, literally up to the second that they're walking on stage, they're changing the costume. You know, maybe they're letting something in, changing the color of something, or like, for example, astronaut, I think his lights kept on changing colors. You know, and then every single season, they keep on experimenting with new different things, you know, animatronics, maybe different LEDs, a different kind of fabric. As the series continues, and I'm assuming they're getting a bigger budget, they could probably put in more advanced technology into the costumes. I'm still waiting for a full LED lit up one. So Marina, come on, get at me, will you? Come on! Next is, how did they do the costumes during the pandemic? We touched on this not too long ago. And the simple answer is, they did as much as they could together and then as much as they could at home, but they eventually had to come together to build all of the costumes. I know a lot of people were working from home and it was pretty cool. They actually sat on here and said, instead of using machinery, we were going back to the basics by sewing everything from hand. So could you imagine doing that Yeti costume? I know. 
all of that fur, it probably took forever. And a lot of these costumes do take months, which is nothing she adds in right here, depending on what it is. They have to mold the costume to get the right fabric. They have to sew in all the hair, make sure all the details look great. And with everything pretty much filming in 4K, which is the highest quality you can do it in, you can see every single detail. That's why if you actually watch the show and you can zoom in, the details are incredible. Next, she talks about what was her favorite costume of all time. This is where Hansen does come into play. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, she is from Moscow, Russia. She was born and raised there, spent most of her time there, and she originally pitched the Russian nesting dolls, which there's a Russian name for it, I can't pronounce it, and Julie's not with me, so I'm not gonna try to. She's been pitching that since season two, but they kept on saying, you know, it's kind of hard to do that, especially with one person. Because up till this season, we really didn't have two people. I mean, we did have the owls, which are two costumes, but you needed multiple people because nesting dolls are like five, six, seven different kind of dolls within each other. So you need a bigger group. Well, with Hanson having three, this was finally her chance to use those dolls. And they went back and forth with Hanson a lot of times because this costume, unlike the other ones where you have arms and legs and you can move, you had to pretty much stand in that thing like this. You know, obviously they have a little bit of room, but not really too much. And so they went back and forth with the Hanson brothers to try to figure out the best way for them to be comfortable, but also perform. You know, so that's why they added in like the little mouth, add a little movement to it. And there was a little way so they can move inside of it. But um, I mean, in the end, they had three of them, but really, the, you, I mean, you've seen the way they kind of manipulated them because there really was a fourth at the same time. I know it, it gets confusing, but that's the fun behind those Russian nesting dolls. Overall, though, I have to admit those dolls were so beautiful. They were all hand painted. Yeah like a real nesting doll. They hand painted them on. Now she didn't give us any kind of spoilers for season six of The Masked Singer. I'm assuming that the costumes are done. I mean, they're gonna start filming this thing in three weeks. Maybe they're still working on them. I mean, she did say up to the minute they're working on them, but I think the bulk of these things are done. I know when she was talking about, hey, when you're like in season four, are you already thinking about season five? And she's like, not really, because these costumes, there's a lot of maintenance and things that have to be done. They try, in a perfect world, they would be starting in the next season, but you know, it's like, we need these costumes looking great now. They need to keep, keep them up and keep them going for the entire length of the show. Keep in mind, because the show is voted off by the fans, there really is no way of knowing which costumes are gonna last longer. So maybe they have a costume that is not holding up too well and that person gets voted off and that's great. And there's less time that to spend on maintenance, but if that costume has to make the whole way to the end, there is a lot of things for them to do to get it ready. Now, there is one big spoiler I wanna to give to you guys. And this, if you saw the preview photo, is a photo of, you know, what we had as the winner, AKA the piglet. And the sketch, well, I have all the sketches for you guys, at least some of them. I'm gonna share them with you guys right now. Here you go. So there you guys go. Which costume was your favorite so far? I mean, we had five seasons plus one season of The Masked Dancer. It's kind of hard to pick one, but my favorites were the broccoli and the crab. And we're still waiting for hashtag baby monster for season six. I'm hoping there is. I have no confirmation of anything. There, there may not be. There may not be, even though I want there to be. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Let me know below what costume you want to see for season six. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I'm Joey. Stay safe, everyone. See you later. Bye.